So I want to talk about three different kinds of students. And I think the best way to come into this discussion is to first review Neil Postman's wonderful story about three umpires. I think he tells it in his book called Crazy Talk, Stupid Talk. I'm not sure if I've talked about it here before. I think I have. But the, the first umpire doesn't really know anything about communication and language, how they relate to reality. And this person says, I calls them as they are. Now the second umpire, a little more sophisticated, has thought a little bit about problems of epistemology and how language and thought relate to reality. And this person says, I calls them as I sees them. Now the third umpire is a scholar's scholar. This is a thoughtful person who's really considered all of the implications of speech and language. And again, this person studied with Wittgenstein at Cambridge, right? And this person says, until I calls them, they ain't. And those three just so nicely align to the three different kinds of students that I think you could see or you think about when you think about what it, what it means to be a student. Now, the first student is someone who's probably not thought that much about education. They maybe haven't realized their role or their obligations or responsible, their responsibility or their position within all of uh, the education system that they're in. And they think, you know, the courses that they need to take, those are specified by the university. You show up, you do the 120 credits, and whatever courses they tell you to take, that's what you take. And that's the first student. The second student, a little more sophisticated. They've, they've wised up, and they're probably upperclassmen. They've come to realize that even though there are courses that are required, there are multiple sections of any course, and most often, it's who you take, not what you take. That is, the exact same course can be completely different when taught by a different professor. And these students will seek out particular professors, realizing that a professor can make or break a course. And so in this sense, the student starts to realize right, that it's not the course description or the course title, it's the particular person that this professor makes for a great class, this other professor doesn't. That is, they start to realize that everything that's known is known by someone, and these particular people somehow are, are the critical difference. But it's the third student who is most rare and I think furthest along in that development of, of learning about what education is and uh, how to understand their own role in it. The third student, they, they take that insight of it's not what you take, it's who you take, and they fully complete it all the way back by bringing it to themselves. Right? They realize that, yeah, it's not what you take, it's probably not even who you take, but it's who you are when you're in the class. Yeah, it's sort of like they take this sense of they sort of say, wow, in the same way that it's not what you take, but who you take, I bet for the professor, the class is completely different according to which students are in there. And then they start to realize that it's who they are, to what extent they have owned their own destiny, to what extent they have owned fully the responsibility for educating themselves, that now they're in a position to make a really great contribution to their own education. And I think they also realize that even a great, great professor can be wasted on someone who's not up to anything. 